Elhamdülillah Rabbil Alemin ve salatu ve selam eşrefil mursalin Seyyidina ve Mawlana Muhammed Mustafa sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Fatiha Allah ya Rasul ulul amri minkum. And I was a reminder to myself and abdukul ajeezu da'eef wa miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and we pray that Allah Zawajal's rahmah and mercy to be upon us and his oceans of forgiveness to dress us. Bless us with all this immense ni'mat that uh, most of which we can't even understand. When Allah guides, He truly guides. When Allah doesn't guide, there is no guidance for them and has the immense realities that when Allah is sending us into these tariqahs and listening from a distance, begin to get activated, begin to listen, to begin to learn, these are immense blessings for dunya but its weight for akhirah can't even be understood. What does one zikr have a weight in Divine the Presence when you go to receive your hisab that all the, the amal on the earth has all the amal that you lived even hundred years even if Allah gave you five hundred years all your actions, what value would it have? With one dhikr of Allah one salawat on Sayyidina Muhammad that what Allah will put a weight on that dhikr on the immensity of that mentioning of Divine the Presence with all its love, with all its understanding, with all its sincerities. All the amal in the world is not going to be similar to the mentioning of Allah so when Allah inspired the servants to go sit with these people of dhikr, go learn from these realities, go learn about my most beloved in creation, not only you're taking that learning as a protection on earth and today you see it more than ever. What type of protection it is, what type of ni'mat which is blessings, what type of goodness is coming, what type of characteristics Allah is teaching. And when you look to other people you say that they don't have those characteristics because they have not been taught the way of the heavens. And then we can understand shukran lillah that alhamdulillah Allah is guiding. And then Allah begin to inspire these zikrs, these salawats, these du'as, all of this of what He gave to His beloved Habib Sayyidina Muhammad and that Prophet gave to His beloved nation, His beloved ones whom from amongst His nation they reached to that heart and they've been inspired by these du'as, these nasheeds and all of these praisings. This is the greatness of the gift of the Divine the Presence of which most children don't understand the gift that their parents gave to them, the life they gave them, the food they gave them, the sustenance they gave them, the parents who went and struggled to work so that they could educate their children. The kids never understood what parents did to give them everything and Allah inspire we don't understand either. What Allah is giving to us, what Prophet's blessings are, are emanating and dressing towards us. But one day in this dunya we'll understand and as the dunya comes closer to its end we begin to understand what type of dressings Allah is giving to the soul. In days of protection what type of protection Allah is giving to the soul. And then the most important then Yawmul Mashar and the last breath we leave from this dunya, what Allah dressed upon the soul from these associations, from these teachings and from this way. Alhamdulillah that this is the blessed night of the 29 and it opens the secret of 29. And we talked before when someone had asked about the Ankabut and has an immense reality immense reality that uh, everything of this material world is a reflection of a higher realm, means everything is reflecting onto this earth. In the understanding of the huruf, the heavenly numeric code for the name of Sayyidina Muhammad is 92, the reality of 9 and 2. Now we're beginning to even understand some of these numbers that what this nine and the two represent, how the nine is the sultanat and most powerful because anything that 
multiplies itself and becomes multiplication as a reality of fana. Anything that multiplies itself by this nine becomes a nine. A nine is the single most powerful digit and it holds the sultanate and that anything in the presence of the nine will be brought to be nothing, to be dust, bashiya. Because this the azimat and the greatness of the power that Allah gave to the reality of the kingdom of Sayyidina Muhammad And then we talked last night of the two and the two how it has the immensity of the entire ocean of Qur'an, all of Qur'an in Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, all of it in 30 juz, all of it in 7 verses of Fatiha. All of Qur'an brought into Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and like a laser brought all of it into the ba'a. And that ba'a is the representation of two in both Arabic regular and abjad understanding. The second letter of the Arabic language is ba. So that two is the ocean of Qur'an and the manifestation of every power. Every knowledge, every reality Allah putting in the secret of that too. So when we look to the huruf of Muhammad, its numeric code is 92. The Sultanate with all the power of Holy Qur'an emanating from his Divinely heart that Allah is, is put into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad man's of Qur'an. That from that heart, from that soul Allah's uncreated speech is emanating eternally. So yeah I, I can keep going to numbers but it's going to confuse people because like computer programming just too much of coding. But that 92 has immense reality of Prophet so its reflection onto this earth is the mirror which is 29. So 2 and 9 is the reflection of 92 because in a mirror everything is reversed. So in the heavens the secret of 92 when it reflects onto the earth which is now the reversal is 29 like when you look at a something in the mirror it reverses its position. Because this dunya is just a reflection of the malakut. So then 29 has to do with the secret of reaching these realities, reaching the sultanat and the heavenly kingdom of the nine, the power, the qudra in which we lose our identity. Whatever number you think you are, whatever identity you are when you become nothing and fana and the shaykhs take you into the presence of the sultan. In the presence of the nine you will be reduced to nothing and then multiplied by that nine and you become from the nine, you become Muhammadiyoon. So anything multiplied by the nine will find itself in the ocean of fana becoming. So the greatness of the secret of Sayyidina Muhammad is to make those realities to become Muhammadiyoon that the Muhammadan light begin to dress them, begin to bless them. That's the secret of the ninth month that eight months out of the year insan is building themselves with all the dunya, with all the bad characteristics and Allah wants a point in which to wash them and cleanse them because how can they go now for hajj? and reach the twelfth month which is the completion of every year we have a hijrah and we have a, a meeting in the Divinely Presence, Allah not going to allow this nation to enter into that presence with all of their badness. So nine and the month of Ramadan is to be cleaned, to be washed, to be annihilated. So that's why when we talked about as soon as they entered into Siyam and the, went into the gateway of Ramadan Allah began to crush their nafs, crush all the shaitanic character, destroy and with muntaqeem begin to burn all of the badness until by the end when they're coming out of Ramadan they come out pure and purified. Like newborn child that Allah washed all the badness, washed all of the character and this is a gift that only Allah can give. 
and he wants to give it only in the time when the servant is in a state of fasting. The greatest action that requires no action from us. So just Allah saying, just you stop eating, sit there and I'm going to dress you and purify you, wash you, cleanse you so that you become like the nuqh, like a dot. So it renders everything into a nuqh, into nothingness. So then the secret of that nine is going to be the dressing. So then twenty-nine is the reality of the ankabut. So in dunya Prophet went to the holy cave and in that cave he took his beloved friend Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq and the cave was sealed with the ankabut, the spider web. So means then this reality of 29 has an immense reality. On the 29th of Ramadan we pray that Allah dress us from these realities and this, this immense ocean of realities. Mm -hmm. That this ankabut is a secret that the cave is the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and the cave in which all realities are emanating. And most will pass the cave and think, oh there's a spider web, nobody must be in there and they pass it. So it's not for everybody. It's not that we propagate and the whole world will come to this reality of the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and especially then the uloom of the khawas, the knowledge of, of those whom are khawas and elite amongst the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad not in status of pride and arrogance but what Allah dressed upon their heart of Divinely knowledges. So means that seal and that parde has to do with a spider and ankabut because everything is the seeker is seeking. Say, why, why would a spider be guarding and why Allah would use this analogy of a spider web that guards a reality that people could not see. And the guard and the parde is so frail. Allah didn't make it hadad, had and be iron, He made it a spider web. That it's not so difficult to go but you have to have sincerity within your heart. That if you have sincerity within your heart this cave is not so hidden, it's a hidden treasure wanting to be known. If you wanted to hide it Allah would have hide it behind a mountain. And he would have walked into the mountain and it would have immediately sealed that nobody could find the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Means every event Allah gives its understanding. If I wanted to hide Prophet I would have made the mountain open, he walk into it and it would have sealed and nobody would have found this reality. But because Allah is, is giving us an understanding, no this reality is a cave. And its parde was so frail, it was just a spider web. You probably could look through the spider web if you really had an interest and if you had a, a bit of sincerity and you stop and you have good character you may find it. And that's why the turuqs are not hard to find, they're broadcast, they're teaching. But if you have just a little bit of sincerity, a little bit of good character you stop, you listen. Say, this is different. And then you with your heart Allah will come on in. So then the reality of that spider web should be drawing our attention. So then they inspired why Allah used the analogy of a spider web because that house is a frail house. That is a beautific architectural, what do you say, what's the word for it? very beautific symbol that even the, the guard to the door of the cave of that reality is of such an immense beautific nature that it makes its home with no blueprint, no computer gra grafting and, and CAD systems. It renders a beautiful home, it does its work with its silk and very fragile and frail and makes this immense home. And then many isharats that this cave has an immense symbol and that its, its parda is of a very subtle nature. 
So it means that this way that we're going to be entering in is of a very subtle nature. And this characteristics that they're teaching to us has an immense importance to Allah It's so frail, it's so sensitive that everything you do and everything you say and every interaction that we have, it's like the house of the ankabut. That it, you're, you're making a home for Allah to see, you're making this beautiful artistic drawing of your character. Because Allah said, don't look to your surah, don't look to your face, to your body, to your form. I look to your heart, means the, the, the image that you put out of being beautific on the outside to people is not what Allah is looking at. So, I'm looking to your heart, means your character, how you deal with people, how are, how is your sincerity, how is the inner cleanliness, not the outer form. Anybody can make a fake outer form. Where everybody shows up in one outfit and they go out and they're doing something completely different. Allah said, I'm not impressed by your outer form, I'm looking to your inner reality. And that's the ankabut that you're sitting and you're making, you're doing your zikr, you do your awrads, you do all that you can. Not that you're perfect, none of us are, are perfect but we're taking a path towards perfection. We do all our practices and this is then Allah is, this is a beautific house that you're making. You're doing your awrad, doing your zikr, doing all these practices, keeping this muhabbat, keeping this muhabbat. This is the, the, the web that must be woven by the people of tariqah. Allah looks to that, so then that, that spider web at the cave was an entrance for us to go. Then they begin to teach, yes, then look to Surat Al Ankabut is the 29, and then lo and behold, 29 is the reflection of the heavenly reality of Sayyidina Muhammad means that for us to reach to Prophet and to really reach has to be of that character. We're not an animal that hunts in the in the bazaar. We're not looking to hunt down big game and, and live our life running in bazaars, running in, in, in the marketplaces. But we are people whom supposed to be doing our zikr, doing our practices, keeping our life to be balanced and doing all those things in which Allah finds beautific. And then you've made a beautiful web and Allah sends the sustenance. That was the talk on when somebody asked about should we focus on our work and then focus on akhirah. No naqshbandiya and, and the reality of the heart of Prophet is I don't need people to be bears in which they're hunting all day long, running, 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 running to, to try to grab something from dunya. But beautify ourselves with our good character, our awrads, our zikrs, all the practices that we can do. When you do all of that Allah is teaching for us because He's saying, I can do it for my nature, why can't I do it for walakal karam da bani Adam, my most honoured creation is bani Adam. So He says, look to the nature. So see this spider how he makes this beautiful house and spends his time making this beautiful house out of silk that anyone can come and just put their finger through it and ruin it in a second. And this poor creature don't know how much work I did, you just came with your finger and moved this whole spider web. <laughs> with all that frailty then Allah finds such pleasure in that and He sends the sustenance to that web. The sustenance comes to them, means they do good, they do their practices, the work comes to them, the jobs inshaAllah come to them. All of this sustenance begin to reach to them. So then this is the character in which Prophet is teaching for us. That be of this nature, be with them in this understanding, build yourself, build your characteristics. Once they understood that and the shaykhs conveyed, these are the realities of tariqah, Allah put this reality in that cave. We all want to enter the cave, they are the people of the cave, they actually came out of the cave to come out and grab people. Come back into the cave of Sayyidina Muhammad who he entered the cave and into the city of knowledge, inside the city of knowledge with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq. This is the Divinely heart, that's why Prophet when Isra al-Miraj was hearing the voice of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq And this cave 
is presented to you because Imam Ali laid in the bed and gave the symbol of, I will die here, then you go with Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq to the cave. So these two holy personalities play immense role into this reality. And then teaching us, now have this character enter into this cave, enter into this reality, then awliyaullah begin to teach that this 29 in the huruf and the Arabic letters is called La. 29th letter is La, right? Shahid looking at me like, <laughs> it's like, hmm? La. <laughs> La, Lam Alif. This is the secret of the Lam Alif, the reality of the Lam Alif. Now it's making for us an understanding, this is the characteristic. What's our direction is the cave what we took the night before. The subtlety of the nature that people are not seeing it. You advertise it all over YouTube, they're not finding it, they actually send you a curse word and a, and a bad thing too. Those were, must have been the people who were like from the town coming to attack Prophet says, <laughs> you get the same characters in every, every play. You get the ones whom attacking and the ones whom are inside from the reality. And you see them come by the channel, come by the, the pages and they say a bad word, throw something and go. And they didn't see the, the subtlety of that cave. And those whom Allah granted a blessing. Then the shaykhs come to teach the character, we must be like that, we must be like the spider. That's why Allah put it as a sign for the cave. You want to end a Muhammadan heart, you want to enter in? Make your house and make your practices like the ankabut. They're very frail, people may not think you're doing anything, what's the importance of you sitting down to do your recitations and your zikr right now? But they don't think anything about a spider web either. But it was enough importance that Allah named an entire a surah of Qur'an and then put it under the secret of 29. So then as soon as they have this characteristic to enter into that reality, to be dressed by that reality, then awliyaullah come and teach you, yes, the 29th letter is Lam Alif and the secret between the Lam which is the Muhammadan reality and the Alif and the Izza and Might and Majesty of Allah and how this is our, our secret, hidden wanting to be known. Alif is always in front and the lamb comes to attach its reality. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. But because of the secret Allah gave that I'm a secret wanting to be known, didn't say I'm going to be known. So the secret hides behind the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So the lamb will go in front and the alif be, goes behind and begins to hide. So means then that lamb alif is then the Zulfiqar. So that is the lamb alif, the 29 is the Zulfiqar. So lamb alif equals the Zulfiqar. So the Zulfiqar is the one whom is there, Ulul Albab. They are the gatekeepers of this cave. Their master taught by lying in the bed. So then if they want to inherit from the Zulfiqar to enter into this cave, their master is teaching them, come now sacrifice yourself. Put yourself on the bed. What Imam Ali is teaching in 29? So I'm the Ulul al Bab, I'm a Madinat al Imam Ali Babahum, the gatekeeper of this reality, the one whom teaches Ulul al Bab. Says, Come back on and learn that from the bed I lied and sacrificed myself, lied down onto the bed when Prophet had to escape for the hijrah. I lied into the bed and said, let me be sacrificed for the mission that you have. I find myself of no importance. Do you understand not to find yourself of any importance? Your understanding, your tafsir, your thoughts are of no importance. 
means when we empty ourselves, Imam Ali is teaching us that I didn't think about myself, my maqam, what I'm supposed to do, what am I going to have in paradise. Only knew the importance is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad I will sacrifice myself for this reality as a young man, not as an older man, as a young man he laid into the bed, I will make and imitate you into this bed, let them to come to harm me, kill me and give you time to establish the nation. And this was the role that the master of the gate is teaching. Allah was so loved by that action that he put Sayyidina Jibra'il upon his head and Sayyidina Mikail at the threshold of his feet and said, not a hair is to be harmed in this soul. Just the action of watching them what he's about to do, then he is now guarded. So Ulul Albab who they inherit that reality, they inherit that Imam Ali salam is giving to them a sword, Sayyidina Jibra'il is guarding them and Sayyidina Mikail salam is guarding them. And as a result they inherit the Zulfiqar and they keep the way and they teach the way into this Divinely cave and all its realities and all its secrets so that they take the head off of people that don't use your head to understand this reality, don't enter into a debate with the shaykh to use this reality. Your, your head is of no value, you have no understanding of what the heavens look like, what the oceans of reality will be dressed like, we have absolutely nothing to understand from the head. So the whole life of the people of the, of the gate and the Zulfiqar is to teach people, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah, la to your head and nothing but Allah in your heart and all the secrets and knowledges of Lam Alif in which Nabi Musa wanted where the two rivers meet. These are two rivers, the river of La illallah and the river of Muhammadun Rasulullah and the river of all realities, ulumul awwaleen wa akhireen. So the immensity of that. That they give to you these swords and teach people now how to lose the faculty of trying to analyze with their head and open the reality with their heart and then feed them from the knowledges of the lam and alif and that become their qudra and their power. So when they go back to the cave they see that there's two eggs from a bird, a bird had Allah had put a bird and set on two eggs because the bird represents inside this cave. If you pass through this spider web through these shaykhs, inside this cave you have to be of an angelic nature. That's why they taught all the, the, the bird and the ishq the bird has. That what's the nature of the people inside the cave is they don't really have too much of a mind but they have immense hearts. That's why they begin to avoid people. When you have and you're not thinking through your head anymore but you have an immense heart, you sound cuckoo to everybody. It's like a bird trying to sit with you and describe why is it flying. Could you imagine if the bird could talk? Allah gave a bird a tongue and you sat down with it and said, can I ask you how the heck are you flying 10,000 feet in the air? The bird was, I have no idea either. It didn't occur to me to think like that um, and then tomorrow it can fly. So the symbol of the bird is the immense ishq, Allah gave it a heart with immensity, immense purity. So much so that it's of an angelic nature, that's why when you see in the Diwan and awliya, when awliya want to visit people they come as birds. You see a bird on a window and it doesn't seem to leave. You see a bird moving around or making tawaf around the house or different places, people see them in different ways. And these are symbolic of awliyaullah when, when they're not threatened by you and Allah sending them, sending maybe a turkey to make tawaf around your house and all sorts of 
events that are happening that everyone has different events. But these are symbolic of awliya that Allah is showing them they're of that nature, their hearts are significant. Their mind they don't use it, they don't want to sit and talk to somebody about hockey. They're not interested in that, they're not interested in these things. And if they talk from their heart to other people, dunya people, they're lost and the people will fall asleep not understanding what they're talking about. So this is the symbol, inside this cave your nature must be like a bird, immense heart and mind that you don't really care to use, you're just going by your love. And Allah will make you to sit on two eggs, a thaqalain, the inside is the master of the world of form, mulk wa malakut. And that you will inherit the mulk and malakut, Allah make you to be sovereign over this dunya and over akhirah. He make it like a kingdom for these awliyaullah. So the immensity of, of, of 29, the immensity of these lights, the immensity of what Allah want to dress the servants, we pray that Allah because in <coughs> anzalna fi Laylatul Qadr one. Wa madraka Laylat al-Qadr, we describe what Laylat al-Qadr was. Laylat al-Qadr khayru min alfi shahr, that was the third, describing that this is our lifetime journey. Hiya is in reference to Laylat al-Qadr, this is the secret of this 29, Hiya al-Fajr. That this Qadr is coming all the time into the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Take yourself into this cave, take yourself into this reality so that to be eternally dressed by Allah's qadr and power that's why you have salam. That's why alayhi salam upon them is that Allah's qudra and power is eternally dressing upon their realities and their dress. We pray that Allah <coughs> dress us, bless us. And those whom can serve and participate and support and everything they do, they don't have to think, oh my God how am I going to reach to all of that? But it's through your khidmat, through these awliyaullah that your action enters into their heart and these lights and emanations that are already in their heart, you don't have to… As soon as you reach to them, participate with them, be active with them, whatever these knowledges is a sign, whatever these realities are emanating within their heart because Prophet promised you be with whom you love. You love them and your love is by your action and your proof. Your soul is, is with them, whatever nights, whatever dressing, whatever blessing is upon them are immediately dispersed to the souls of those people. And that's why they have immense blessings, immense tabarak, immense openings upon them because their heart are with those whom Allah loves and who Sayyidina Muhammad loves. And as you stay more and more and more dressed, more and more dressed then you're feeling the love of Prophet from the love of Sayyidina Muhammad they begin to feel the love of Allah How they can feel the love of Allah real love of Allah it's because the same is for them. When they do what they do and they're keeping themselves in the presence and in the hadara and the hudur of Sayyidina Muhammad they feel the ishq of Allah that emanating in the heart of Prophet <coughs> and they feel it dressing them, blessing them and annihilating them. And that what we call inayatullah, it doesn't come from outside tajalli. And ayat is when Allah look to the heart of Prophet at every moment and in that heart witnesses that servant and his ridha and satisfaction begin to hit upon that servant and they reach to a, a, a annihilation and they come and go, come and go, can come at any moment within the heart of Prophet Because Allah is at all times within the heart emanating these realities into the heart of Prophet Subhan Rabbi Ya Rabbal Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Basira Surat Al Fatiha